When I first decided to write a book, I obsessed over reading blog posts and books about plotting and the craft of writing. But I don't think I ever really obsessed over revision processes. I've never really researched how other authors revise their books. And I think the reason is because in the beginning, I wasn't confident in my plotting skills or my drafting skills. But by the time I finished a draft and I got feedback on it and I was ready to revise, I felt maybe a little more confident that I could do it and that I could figure it out. So last week I sent out my first newsletter ever because laziness, or honestly, I don't know. I just never really knew what to do with my newsletter. So even though I've been building a list, I wasn't using it. But then once I started this channel, I realized I could use my newsletter to ask you guys to ask other writers what questions you have about the writing craft process, and then I could answer them in my videos. Anyway, link in the description below if you wanna subscribe, but last week's newsletter I sent out, I asked what scares you most about revising? And I got a really great response from Sherry, hi Sherry, who said, my first draft is a huge sprawling hot mess. Where and in what order do I start revising is what I would like advice on. Should I do a first pass focusing on plot, then another with settings description and so on? There's just so much to keep in mind. Take out cliches, add metaphors and similes, change inconsistent tense, character agency, more showing, less telling, inject voice, list where the clues occur. Are there enough? Too much? Yikes. I know some people start with the first chapter, perfect it, then move on to the next chapter, but doing it that way would mean changes later would require going back and fixing things at the beginning. With a word count of between 90K and 110K, it's just so unwieldy. I'm prepared to create as many drafts as need be to get it right, but I find the more I look at it, the less I see it. Okay, this question is perfect because this is exactly what I wanted to address in this video. And right up front, that thing you said, Sherry, about starting with chapter one, perfecting it, and then moving on to the next chapter, no, absolutely not the method I would recommend. Mostly because it's kind of impossible, at least if you're not a veteran author with tons of novels under your belt. And for the record, I have never been able to revise a novel, a first draft in the first pass and then be done with it, ever. Because, Sherry, you said it perfectly, doing it that way would mean changes that you made later in the draft would have an effect on the beginning of your book. So you'd be constantly jumping around to make those adjustments. And the thing is, that has like sort of a domino effect. Only instead of knocking over one row of dominoes, you're knocking over like a row here and then a row that goes backwards and then a row that goes kind of diagonally this way. And so you've just got like a massive pile of dominoes. I'm not sure if that analogy works, but you get my point. It's a mess. So I only actually really started to become consciously aware of my revision strategy when I started ghostwriting. Ghostwriting is a really unique process because I'm writing the book, but someone else has conceptualized the story and they're very involved in the process. So I know the draft as well as I know drafts of my own original novels, but I'm revising them to fit the client's ultimate vision. Also with ghostwriting, I often have multiple sets of notes to work with, notes from the client, notes from any editors they're working with, and I have to like consolidate those notes and figure out which ones we need to take and which ones maybe conflict with each other, how to choose which one, and then of course how to implement them. Then, and this is what ultimately helped me figure out my revision strategy, I have to explain how all of this is going to work and what the result is going to be to the client before I start to implement the changes. I call this a game plan. And kind of, like I said, without realizing it, I've started doing this for my own novels in the last few years. I'm not sure why I call it that. Maybe game plan just sounds less intimidating than edits or revisions. But the reason I like doing it is because it gives me a tiny little sense of detachment from my drafts. You've probably heard this before, but when you revise your book, you're not an author anymore, you're an editor. And that means you have to have that little bit of detachment. Anytime I hear about authors fighting to keep this one thing in or refusing that note as if they're doing the right thing for their art and thumbing their noses at commercialism or whatever, I don't know, I think this isn't about art or how much you love your story or about selling out. I mean, I feel like if you really love your book, you're going to do what's necessary to make it the best version of itself. And the fact is when you finish a first draft, you are too close to it to fully see its flaws. You have to step back 
you have to get other eyes on it and get feedback. And you don't have to take all of that feedback. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in a little bit of denial and doing yourself and your book a disservice if you don't at least consider the feedback you get and implement some of those notes. So what the heck is a revision game plan? Here is what I do step by step. First, I copy and paste all of the edits I got into one document. Because if I'm looking at multiple documents or multiple emails or whatever form they came in, that just contributes to me feeling overwhelmed. Once I get them all together in one document, I read through them specifically looking for big picture problems that more than one critique partner mentioned. For example, the magic system, if this is a fantasy novel, doesn't really make sense. Or there's a plot hole that three of my beta readers all pointed out. Your big picture problems are obviously going to differ from book to book. In last week's video, I showed you the edit letter from one of my books, which was split into a section for each main character, a section about specific relationships, and then a section about plot and the climax. If you haven't already watched that video, I would go back and check that out before we go on to the next step here. So second, I create a second new document and I write headings for all of these big picture problems. There's usually anywhere from two to five. And for me, they're almost always related to character development, plot, or world building. For example, when I revised Spell and Spindle for my editor, the first and biggest section in my game plan was the actual magic system because she pointed out a ton of inconsistencies and general lack of clarity about how the magic in the story really worked. Quick side note here, Fridge Ghost, awesome name. I promised to address your question last week in this video and I think this is the best spot to do it. So you asked, when you're critiquing someone who sends in their work chapter by chapter, how would you alter the checklist? Theme might not be easy to find in the first few chapters. I totally agree and here's what I'd do. I would create the checklist or the categories, same thing guys, as you go. So let's say you get the first chapter to beta read. You probably aren't going to have any categories yet. You're just gonna take general notes. You get the second chapter, later you get the third chapter. Eventually you're going to start seeing reoccurring issues. The romance feels forced. There's a flaw in the magic system. The story is just meandering and it's chapter seven and you're still not sure what the protagonist wants. Those are big picture problems and that's when you're going to start creating categories. Keep compiling your notes in the same document as this critique partner of yours continues to send you chapter after chapter. That way, when you have all your notes in one place, it's going to help you quickly refresh yourself on issues in previous chapters without having to go back and read from the beginning. And then you'll be able to offer her increasingly in-depth feedback as you go because you're going to be able to say, oh, well look, this thing that happens in chapter 10, it doesn't really make sense because of that thing back in chapter three. So basically, I guess what I'm saying, Fridge Ghost, is do this exact process, but you're just going to have to do it slower and stretch it out over the time over which you receive the chapters. Okay, third step, and I'm gonna try to illustrate this for you because if I just say it, I'm afraid it's going to sound confusing. I put these two documents side by side, all the feedback next to the categories, and I read through the feedback and type each bit into the appropriate category. Rephrasing, clarifying, adding thoughts or ideas as they come to me. I don't copy and paste. That way my game plan is entirely in my own words. Like I said earlier, looking at notes from two or more sources just contributes to the feeling of being overwhelmed that already comes with trying to tackle a revision. This way you've consolidated everything into one source, one document, and again, it's yours, your thoughts and your ideas. This game plan is your edit letter to yourself. And again, that helps contribute to that necessary little bit of detachment that you have to have in order to get this right. Okay, fourth step might be optional depending on the extent of your revision. If you have a big picture issue that's going to require a lot of restructuring and rewriting, then you're going to wanna to split this revision into two passes. Sherry, I'm gonna use your question as an example again here. You mentioned plot and setting issues along with taking out cliches, adding metaphors and similes, changing inconsistent verb tenses, character agency, more showing, less telling, injecting voice, and listing where the clues occur. 
When I look at this list, the two biggest things that jump out at me are plot and character agency. Plot problems are usually structural problems, and structural problems often revolve some rewriting, some shuffling around of scenes. And character agency is directly tied into the plot, right? Because your character's choices and actions are what's driving the plot forward. You also mentioned clues, and I remember from a previous video that when you posted your query that your book is a mystery. So I'm gonna include clues in here too because clues are tied into the plot. Setting and description might fall into this past too depending on how integral the setting is to the plot. But if you mean that you just need to improve your descriptions of the setting, then I would put that into the second pass. The second pass is going to be about all of that more sentence level stuff. The cliches, the metaphors, symbols, showing versus telling, and voice because all of that stuff I just said is tied into voice, right? Now, before I get to the next step, I want to point out one very important thing that I haven't done. Open the document and read the draft. Because I do all of these previous steps I just mentioned without rereading my book. And depending on how long I've been waiting for notes from my beta readers or my editor, that might mean I haven't read this book in weeks or even months. That's good. Again, distance, detachment. If I kick off my revision process by first thing, rereading my book, all I'm gonna look at is all those little darlings in there that I don't want to cut. And then consciously or not, as I read through my beta reader's notes or my editor's letter, I'm going to be looking for ways to justify things and finagle this or that to leave in the parts I wanna leave in, even if somewhere deep down I know they've got to go. I have been down this road a lot and it has always resulted in me having to do another big revision on the book. Because I didn't do my job the first time, I was still being an author, not an editor. So I highly, highly recommend you do all of the previous steps without rereading your first draft. So now, step five. I open that document and I read through the first draft slowly, chapter by chapter, and I take notes in the margins on ideas I have of ways that I want to address some of these big picture notes. I don't worry about voice or cliches or similes or any of that because a lot of this might be getting rewritten, so there's no point in really zoning in on the sentence level stuff at this stage. Whenever possible, I do all of this by hand, and I have some fun with colored pens and sticky notes. You can do this on your laptop, just opening the Word document and writing your own notes and track changes. But if you can print it out, I really do recommend that because looking at something not on your screen but rather on paper just kind of helps you see it in a different way. Step six, I take that printed out manuscript with all the markups and the sticky notes and I put it next to my laptop and then I lay out my daily goals. This might be to edit a chapter a day or two chapters a day or 10 pages a day, whatever works for you and feels the most feasible. And then, and this is really, really important and I know it seems like it's going to be the easiest step to skip but I really highly recommend you don't. Start a brand new document and retype your draft. I only open that first draft on my document to print it out, then I close it again. Because if I just go into the first draft document and start making my edits, that's how I end up justifying things, reading those little darlings, saying, oh, maybe I don't have to change that, or if I just add this here, then I can probably get away with keeping that in. Some of it is that just authorly clinginess that I think we all have about our first drafts, and sometimes, honestly, it's just laziness. I get to the end of a chapter where my editor made a great point that I really needed another scene in order to finish it out, and if I'm in the document, I just think, eh, I can just add a couple lines and that'll accomplish the same thing. But if I'm typing the draft all over again, if I'm starting from the beginning and retyping every word, then I'm going to just do a much better job, a more thorough job of really rewriting the parts that need to be rewritten and adding the things that need to be added and cutting the things that need to be cut. And then the seventh step, this is going to be your second pass. This is where you're going to check for all of the line level stuff. So now you have this nice, clean, new document. You can print it out again, or you can just do this in Word on your laptop. And this is where you're going to check your verb tenses, any inconsistencies, craft the sentences, and find your narrative voice with metaphors and similes and imagery and all of that good stuff. Again, same thing here, you wanna set daily goals for yourself. How many chapters, how many pages, 
however, how many words do you want to get done in a day? Because that's actually what we've done with this whole process. We've broken it down to big steps and then slightly smaller steps and then even smaller steps. That's the key to avoiding that whole unwieldy revision situation that you mentioned, Sherry. You take this huge, really challenging endeavor, revising your book, and you break it into smaller steps and you break that down into micro steps. You focus on one baby step at a time until the job is done. This is going to help you from sinking into that pit of despair where a revision feels like it's never ending because you don't see yourself making progress. You do a chapter and a chapter and then you get to this chapter and realize, oh, I gotta go back and change this chapter. And then you're like, God, I'm back here in chapter two. How did this happen? Oh my gosh, that is truly the pit of despair. The game plan is going to help you feel in control of your story as an author while helping you revise like an editor. If you're revising your novel or you're about to start revisions and you wanna give this a shot but you don't wanna go back and rewatch this whole video and remind yourself of what all the steps are again, guess what? You don't have to. My revision game plan is a free download that I put together. It has all of these steps in it along with plenty of space for you to write and take notes and organize your thoughts so that you can tackle your revision like an editor. So check the description box below for a link. Now, when I first started working on this video, I intended to include a section about the difference between rewriting and revising. And I don't mean like rewriting a sentence or rewriting a scene. I mean, how do you know when you need to revise your book and how do you know when you need to rewrite your book? because this is another lesson I learned the hard way. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell because next week we're going to talk about revising versus rewriting and why it took me five years and three drafts of the same book to learn the difference. That's it for today. As always, guys, if you have any questions about revising, please hit me up in the comments below, especially because I'm gonna be talking about this again next week and I would love to address your comments or questions in the video. And of course, if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a like. And that's it for this week. I will see you next time. Have a good day, guys.